given that it's been a year since I've done a makeup tutorial, I think it's only fair that I show you what my current go-tos are in a very casual everyday makeup look. So it's gonna be kind of like a get ready with me while I show you my favorites. And um, <laughs> I don't know what the hair is doing today, but let's get started. Okay, I am, I'm already not ready. I don't have my skin prep. Also, if you're new, welcome. My name is Mozella Torre. Subscribe, join the family. Thumbs up if you like this video, comment down below, and um, enjoy. Nar Skin. This has been a staple for a very long time, ever since I worked at the boutique, RIP. <laughs> the one on Melrose that I used to work at in Los Angeles has officially closed down, but the memes, they're still there. Um, I used to really heavily doubt when makeup brands would come out with skincare. I would say, no way, Jose, that is not for me. Makeup needs to stick with makeup. And then I realized through all my years of doing makeup that the skincare that, where am I looking at? I need to get used to this. <laughs> my monitor is over here. I realized that makeup brands make some of the best skincare because it's meant to go with makeup. And NARS Skin has been a staple of mine for a very long time. I also love Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Skin. This is not what I meant to grab. Guess this so. Light Reflecting Restorative Night treatment no we're going for light reflecting moisture cream i also really like road skincare from miss Haley bieber it's actually really good i need to do a video with that next because for how surprisingly light the products are i felt very hydrated all day long and normally i start to feel a little dry and tight in the middle of the day but i really enjoyed using her products Wow, this feels a lot, maybe they reformulated this. This is the new packaging, it's not. I don't know if you guys can tell, but that felt a lot lighter than the original light reflecting cream. I actually really like it. My eyebrows have been a, <laughs> I don't wanna say a struggle. They've just been a little bit of a debate, a self debate. I can't decide if I like filling them in with pencil and then using my 24 hour brow setter from Benefit or if I like the laminated brow look. The thing about laminated brows, let me tell you, they tend to look a little crazy in person, I'm not gonna lie. If you've ever seen someone in person with laminated brows, they look, you like do a double take, they, they look really unnatural for how natural they look on camera and in like social posts, on Instagram, on TikTok, in person, they look a little like, you can't help but keep staring at them. I don't know if anybody else feels the same way or maybe it's just like a me thing, but they do look a little funky. But I think for today, because I'm gonna be doing like a really natural look, I'm gonna do the laminated brow look and then in another video, I'll do the filling them in with pencil and we can decide. Honestly, don't even waste your money on other products. Elf Brow Lift is incredible. Or use a brow soap, but honestly, you don't have to spend a lot on um, brow products. Yeah, I don't know. I can't decide. Let me know if you agree. Um, I also think that when I do the laminated look, they do look fuller naturally versus using a pencil and then a brow gel. It's just that, I don't know, they can look a little crazy sometimes. It just needs to go brighter. And then we just smash them down. And my brows are really dense, even though they don't look the thickest. They're, they're very, they're thick. There's a lot of hairs in there, let's put it that way. They're not like thick this way, but there's a lot of hair in my brows. But see, like, I feel like I need a little more, like I need a little bit of product there that's where it gets tricky. That's where I don't like the way it looks when it's laminated and you add product. For me, it just never ends up looking good. Okay, other brow up close. So we go under first. Perfect. And then we go up. Oh my God. I just have to say filming with this simplified setup makes me so happy. Why was I trying to be a whole ass Ipsy production before with my lights? with my camera, with my microphone. Now I'm just using the Sony ZV-E10. That's what I'm currently filming on. It is a little finicky. It's labeled a great beginner camera because it is if you just shoot on pure auto, but I personally don't like shooting on pure auto because I like to mess with the settings to get my most realistic image that looks like how it looks in person. And I think if you just use auto, sometimes it can, um, change the coloring a bit or just the way things look. But just shooting on this little tiny, it's considered kind of like, I guess, a point and shoot camera. Shooting on this little camera, one light above my head, one light in front of me, 
and taking advantage of like the natural daylight to kind of fill the room is so it's such a relief. I feel I feel at peace filming right now versus feeling chaotic, which is how I used to feel all the time. I'm gonna try to add a little some little brow strokes. Is this one dark enough? Okay, this is the brow pen from Anastasia. This is not like a go-to or regularly used product. I'm just going to try and add a little more. Oh no. No, that looks no. Oh, see, and we're not going to try anything new because that is not the point of this video, but I tried it. <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Seriously, it's so good, but I see everyone using it. I don't want to say incorrectly because there's no correct, wrong or right way to use makeup. You can always do whatever feels right. But I just feel like everyone kind of just like slathers it all over their face and then completely covers it in foundation, which kind of defeats the purpose. So what I like to do is... For a natural everyday look, I apply it to the eyelids, cheekbone, the bridge of the nose, the jawline, the other side, and then also inner, oh my god, it's like, it's gonna go my eye, that's too much. <laughs> inner corner. And then I'm just gonna blend it out, keeping it to those highlighted or the high points of the face, and then taking whatever's left over and adding it to other areas, kind of like the forehead. See how it's giving that glow? I'm using shade number by the way I think it has the best undertone if you're like a light olive like myself shade three also matches me but it can show up a little light and it's a little more on the peach side I truly am impressed by what Charlotte Tilbury has been able to do on TikTok and the amount of love that they receive from Gen Z because I feel like I mean I haven't been on YouTube in a while so I'll see what you guys think about this but I just remember anytime I used anything that was luxury or expensive, I would get a lot of hate for it on YouTube specifically. Nowhere else, just on YouTube. So I am curious what you are going to think of today's video and the products I'm using. But that's not the case on TikTok. On TikTok, I think people just want quality and great products. I don't know what it is. Maybe people just feed into the hype a lot. But really, really impressed by the presence that Charlotte Tilbury has, especially with a younger audience on there, because like I said, back whenever I used, or my earlier YouTube videos, whenever I used anything luxury, which I absolutely love, like that's just, I'll admit that about myself, I, I naturally gravitate towards um, luxury beauty products. I don't know what it is, maybe it's because I started there, I used to freelance at uh, makeup counters, Armani and YSL being one of them. Um, so I think I just naturally gravitate towards that quality and that type of product. But yeah, I'm just, I want your guys' thoughts on that because I find it really fascinating. But I just remember before being a little traumatized because I'm like, oh, everyone's mad at me. Everyone hates me because I'm only using luxury items that are really expensive. But the way I want you to watch videos and the way I watch things is like, you don't necessarily need those products. More so watch it for the technique and how they're using them and then think how can I get that same finish from the products I already have or from affordable items versus like, oh, I need Hollywood Flawless Filter because I also went out and bought the e.l.f. one. I just haven't tried it yet, so I don't want to use it in today's video, but I heard it's incredible. So there are ways around it and um, just think like, what glowy products do I have? What um, brow gel soap that I can do, that I can use to get this brow effect? There are ways around it you don't need. You never need anything. We just think we need it. Foundation. <sighs> Honestly, Lancome Taunt It All Ultra Wear Karen Glow has been a go-to of mine. I just love the finish of this foundation and the match is perfect. It's shade 240W and I don't know. I just really like it. I've been using it a lot um, whenever I'm going out. It's between this, Luminous Silk, NARS, um, I forget what that new NARS foundation is called. Uh, Dior is always a go-to. See? They're all super high. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm gonna use this as my foundation today. And what I do is I always apply more towards the center of the face first and warm it up so that it sinks into my skin and looks like skin, but then immediately blend it out with my sponge. This is the key here, immediately going in with a sponge and blending it out because the longer you let it sit, 
the more likely your foundation is going to start to set on your face and the harder it is to blend. So I always like to start applying it and then blend it out to get a really nice, almost like sheer skin finish. So I go section by section. I don't use a full pump. Warm it up and blend. Let me zoom you guys in for the next one. Look at, look at the way this goes on the skin. Look at that. By the way, I'm working on a series of videos for my shorts that's literally just, oh my God, this dog fur just came off my face. I'm working on a series of shorts that's just me trying foundations and giving my honest opinions on them, doing it in 4K. This is 4K as well, by the way, but doing it in 4K, zooming in so you can see all the details because I think my biggest complaint too about any sort of product review on socials that isn't YouTube, I feel like you can't really see the quality of the product being applied because the iPhone front camera just isn't ever going to compare to a camera like this that shoots in 4K. I've really been enjoying filming that series of videos and I can't wait. I mean, some of them are probably already up if you haven't checked my shorts tab here on YouTube, but I really, I just, I'm just, obs I'm obsessed with skin. Skin needs to look like skin. Even if I'm full glam smoky eye, the skin needs to be absolutely flawless. And in that series, I am really satisfied with the way you're able to see the way the foundation that I'm trying, all the foundations I'm trying, and I'm gonna do concealers, highlighters, I'm gonna do anything related to skin in that little series. I love that you're able to see it going on every single little pore. Tell me this does not look incredible. This foundation, amazing. I also like to keep any foundation around my mouth really, really minimal, especially right here, because I'm a very expressive person and throughout the day, no matter how heavily I set this area, I'll get creases right here and right here from just like laughing and showing expression as, you know, is natural in life. So I like to keep it really minimal. So I mostly apply it here, here, blend and keep it minimal right here. And then anything that that foundation didn't cover, I'll go in with my favorite concealer of all time. I, sometimes I think to myself, you use this way too often, you need to switch it up, but I, I love this concealer because it works for correcting or concealing little breakouts, adding a little more coverage because it's more of a matte formula, but it doesn't, I don't know what it is about it. It's just so good. Under eyes, blemishes, you need more coverage. It is just, my favorite formula I'm using. So it's the uh, Dior Forever Skin Correct. I'm using shade 2W as kind of like my base color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply it now to any areas that still need a little more coverage, all the little blemishes on my face. Just like that. And then I'm actually gonna let it dry down a little bit. So when I start blending it, the coverage stays where I want it and it doesn't then reveal the blemish that I just tried to cover. <laughs> Favorite base brush of all time, the Hourglass Foundation Brush. I was also using, Hourglass just makes really good brushes. I feel like nobody really talks about them. This one is incredible for your contour, for your concealer. I'll use it again in a little bit, but the foundation brush, when you're just trying to keep a fuller coverage, I just press I don't blend, I just press over those little dots that I just added, and look at that. Ugh, this concealer is so good. I think I've gone through like four of those already, I'm not gonna lie. And it's the only concealer I would ever bring with me on vacation because, I don't know if you guys recall this summer, the little uh, hiccup at the airports with every airline losing suitcases. I went to Portugal with Kyle and then I went to Greece with my mom or me and my sister took my mom to Greece and it was during the height of all of this and I said to myself nope I am not checking a bag because you know what's going to ruin your vacation not having your luggage <laughs> so I said I'd rather pack light and simple than have the airline lose my luggage and you guys already know the liquid rule, the 4411, whatever, whatever that rule is um, with TSA about liquids. And if you are a semi, I don't even want to call myself high maintenance because I can go forever without my nails being done. I don't keep up with like hair appointments. I don't like shave my legs often, things like that. But in terms of like beauty, I would consider myself high maintenance because I do pack a lot of items, hair, skincare, makeup. 
trying to condense that into a tiny little bag is honestly one like top 10 most stressful situations you can put me in. So I would just pack this concealer as my go-to base when on vacation and it worked every single time. My priority is sunscreen and you can't reapply sunscreen if you're covered in foundation. Like you can, but to me, it's just really messy. I don't like the thought of it. And so just bringing that concealer for my travels was, and then I will actually add in shade 1W to highlight. And if it's a little too bright, I'll mix in the base shade 2W, but again, perfect concealer for literally anything and everything. Eyeshadow base, Dior Forever Skin Correct. Foundation, Dior Forever Skin Correct. Spot concealing, Dior Forever Skin Correct. It is so worth it, just trust me on this one, okay? So just really small, minimal amount because there's like a, you know, I'm just doing like a go-to everyday look. And then I will take, again, that hourglass brush that I mentioned, and I'll start blending this in by just like patting it where I applied it. These little areas right here around the nose, on the lip, and then blend. Ugh, I love this base routine. It looks so good. Okay, contour. This, to me, has been the best contour color product I've had in a really long time. This is the Westman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick in the shade Biscuit. What I do is I warm it up first because I don't want to warm it up on my face to prevent myself from using a ton of product. Warm it up and I always start here and I start a little bit higher because naturally when you start blending, a little will go down. So I start higher than usual. Jawline. Do two lines here. And then I use whatever is left over here to do the nose. But first I'm going to start blending. And the, this it Cosmetics brush is my favorite. It's the number seven Heavenly Luxe Complexion Perfection Brush. Um, because it has this small side, so I have to switch brushes when I'm doing my nose and other areas. But look at how perfect that color is. A lot of contours make me look orange because I am on that like lighter range of skin tones. Well, especially during winter. During summer, I can get pretty tan if I try. My dad is very is a very very tan Mexican. My mom is a very white Mexican, <laughs> so I can go either direction. Um, right now I'm pretty pale, so any contour stick that has the slightest bit of orange in it just does not look good on me. It looks, it's, it just looks so bad. And this one works also on my nose, so I don't have to switch products. Sometimes I have to switch from a product that I would use everywhere else to right here because then this will look really orange on camera, in person, and it just does not look flattering. But this is just the perfect shade. Oh my god, I can't get enough of it. It's so good. And then this is where I run into another problem. So I, it's so funny, a lot of the things that I do off camera have been trending lately on TikTok and I'm like, am I just like really bad at showing? Yeah, I, I think you guys are all gonna agree since I haven't been on YouTube. Everyone's been adding the contour on their eyelids and then blending it out that way. And that's what I do with my bronzer too. Um, There's another issue though that I run into whenever I do like the laminated brow look first because there's product and I don't wanna get it in my brow hairs, so. Let me start by doing the nose and then like work up, work up the strength to do that. So I'm taking whatever I put on my hand and I'm using the skinny side, the little tiny side of the brush to do my nose. And I used to not use any cream contour products on my nose, but now I find that when I do it with a cream first and then add my setting powder, it ends up looking really natural versus doing it with a powder afterwards. And especially this particular product, the color again is just Perfecto. Oh, y también te querían decir, yo te quería decir, también quería decir que si quiero hablar más español en mis videos, um, cuando estábamos remodelando, remodeling la casa, muchos de los trabajadores que estaban trabajando en la casa nomás hablaron español, o hablaran, hablaron, habla, habla, hablara, hablaban, hablaban, ¿Es el hablaban, oh my god, what is the word, they only spoke. Español. Entonces, creo que mi español, even though I'm not doing myself justice right now, creo que mi español es más mejor que antes. 
tengo más confianza cuando estoy hablando en español. Even if I forget words, I do just overall feel better. I'm gonna do a little bit of a blip too. I do feel better when I speak Spanish. So, si quieren que yo hable, hable, oh my God. No voy a hablar español, no nomás voy a hablar en español en mis videos, pero si quieren que haga un video donde yo nomás hablo español y estoy haciendo mi maquillaje, lo puedo hacer. Um, nomás les pido que no me, no, no se um, ríen de mí cuando tengo un poquito de un acento y cuando se me olvidan palabras, pero yo creo que es más mejor que antes. But I really do love speaking Spanish. Like, honestly, I think it's one of those things where once you realize that you're getting better and better, you can't stop. And honestly, I just like, I'm so glad the time, oh wait, hold on, hold on, pause, 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 and then I'll pick up what I'm saying. Picking it up on the big side, and I'm gonna be careful to not get it in the brow hairs, but I'm essentially just putting it, let me zoom in. I'm essentially just putting it into the crease and then blending out into the temple right here. And then I'll perfect it with a powder bronzer afterwards, but see how it adds a little bit of a lift? Let me brighten this up a little. I love this for every day because I don't wear eyeshadow every day, and this just satisfies that need to have something there for dimension and just a little bit of a lifting effect, and it looks so good. So what I was trying to say is I just wish growing up that I, just, I, I do think because of social media, I just think of like Bad Bunnies. I'm always quoting Bad Bunny here on my channel. That lyric when he says, Ahora todos quieren ser Latino. No. Hey. I always think of that line when he says, Ahora todos quieren ser Latinos. Because it's not that everybody now wants to be Latinos. It's just that now, and I don't want to say now it's cool. Because that is totally the wrong way to look at it. But now because it is much more visible through social media to see Latinos thriving and like being proud of our culture. It's embraced more, whereas when we were younger, you were trying to fit into this American standard of speaking English perfectly and not speaking Spanish. And I feel like now it's like, okay, we all want to be bilingual. It's cool if you speak more languages. And before it was like, oh, you speak Spanish, you're not from here. You're not American. Um, and it's also like that Selena quote, you're never going to be American enough for the Americans. You're never going to be Mexican enough for the Mexicans. Um, and it was this constant battle. And I feel like now it's cool to be both and embrace both parts of yourself. If you are Latino and you were born in America like myself, um, but your background is heavily, heavily Mex traditional Mexican. I mean, if you guys met my family, you'd be like, whoa, she is Mexican. I keep my family life very private because they are not um, public people and I respect that. But I do love seeing it now. And it's, again, saying, oh, no, it's cool to be Mexican or no, it's cool to be Latino. It's totally the wrong way of thinking it. It's just that it's more accepted, more, um, more uh, visible, more people are able to see our culture more because of social media. Whereas before it's like, oh, you should just, you know, be American if you're in America. You shouldn't, you know show any of your Mexican side because you're not gonna be accepted. So that's all I wanted to say with that. And we can move on to powder. <laughs> I have really been loving powders that have a slight shimmer to them because I think it just looks more natural. I've been obsessed with this Char Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder Ultra Blur. And I take a giant brush. I'm gonna take this one from Smashbox. And I just buff it all over my skin, even over my contoured areas. And it just looks so natural having that slight shimmer. You don't see the shimmer on your face, like you don't see glitter, but it does such a good job at setting and still looking natural and not dusty, crusty, and musty. I'm more so doing like a tapping motion. I'm not really buffing, but really getting into the crevices and applying it over the contour to soften the contour, especially around the nose. I feel like I'm going to really regret the way I pinned back my hair for today's video because first of all, I didn't actually do my hair today. I just wanted to get to filming because our contractor who we're trying to get rid of and just finish up this house project with him, he threw us another curveball and said, hey, tomorrow I can send the guy to do drywall repairs because the first guys he had come to our drywall did not the best job. It's not a bad job. It's just that um, 
there's certain areas that you're like, what's happening here? Like, why does it look like this? Especially in the window I'm looking at right now in the garage. So we asked him to do the repairs before giving him his final payment and finishing up the project. And I told him to give me freaking notice because I'm back on my YouTube game and I'm filming and I'm, you know, I'm booked and busy. And of course today he goes, can they come tomorrow? And I'm like, dude, come on. I need like a week notice so I can like over film in a week now that I'm, you know, trying to be consistent on here. I, I, like 24 hour notice is not enough. So I still will use my OG Laura Mercier. Nothing compares to OG Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. I promise you this, I've tried them all and nothing sets my areas at crease like this powder. So I'm gonna use this under my eyes and on my laugh lines, even though I've already powdered those areas. It's just going to, like I'm gonna do like a light baking action. So I'm just gonna do a little tapping to get rid of the creasing. And then I'm just gonna take my same sponge, which is by Ofra, by the way. It's so weird that I actually don't use any beauty blenders. I realized that the other day, I'm like, wait, you don't use beauty blenders. And they're like the OG of sponges. And I don't know, the texture of them is just not the same. Like this Ofra one has this super, super soft texture. It almost reminds me of the same texture of like a, a wetsuit almost. And it just works so much better in my opinion. Also, <laughs> before, I feel like people are gonna comment on this because um, I mentioned in the beginning that I feel like everyone uses the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter wrong where they like put it on and then they completely cover it in a foundation. I feel like that's kind of what I did, but basically I keep it mostly in the center and then blend it out. And then also when I'm setting with powder, I tend to just like, I don't know if you guys can still see that glow. It still shines through. I feel like when I do this look, I don't add any additional highlighter unless like I want to look super glowy, but for like an everyday natural look, I just leave it like this. Whereas like old me would still add a powder highlight, but for daytime, I love the way the Hollywood Flawless Filter looks on the skin. It looks really natural and glowy, not like, not superficial. Blush, I am still a ride or die for Pat McGrath. Flirtatious, I love this blush for every day. Also note that I only do creams if I'm not using Mm, I, could, I guess I could have done a cream today. If I just wanted to add it on top, I could, but it's not my go-to. I, unpopular opinion, I'm not a like diehard for cream blushes. I love them. However, I feel like we've reached a point in makeup now where we're layering so many things. Like there's no need to do like a liquid blush and then powder on top and liquid or cream contour and then a powder bronze. Like remember the good old days where you just used powder, like a powder bronzer, powder blush, and that was it. And it looked just as good. So a, another note, another thing to make, Another thing to make, <laughs> can't speak. Another thing to take note of, you don't need like all these products to keep layering. You can literally do a powder bronzer. Let me know if you wanna see that as a video, like a makeup look with no cream bronzer or cream blush, cream highlight, if you wanna see it just with powders and like multiple products used in different ways. I think I've done that in the past, but it could use an upgrade, so let me know. Um, so yeah. Long story short, powder blushes tend to be my go-to for like a quick look because I just think that they're easier to finesse versus a cream. Pat McGrath is my favorite. Also, Pillow Talk Cheek to Chic um, blush from Charlotte Tilbury because I love the shimmer it has to add a little bit of glow to the actual cheeks. So I'm just gonna add it right here. Oh, and I actually forgot a step. I usually do my powder bronzer on my forehead. If you notice, I didn't do any cream contour. I didn't do any cream contour on my forehead because going back to the layering of products, I don't like the way it looks when I have a cream a contour or bronzer product. And then I set with a powder bronzer. It looks like way too much product. I look like I have a bronzer helmet. So instead I usually just use a shimmery, a slightly shimmery, not overly shimmery bronzer on the forehead to add color there and keep it light. And my go-to for that is always the same. <laughs> I'm wondering when something will replace this product because I love it so much. This is the Glow Wish by Huda Beauty, Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder in 01 Light. And I just add that to my forehead and it is my favorite thing ever. I don't know, it just looks so natural. You can't even see it on the skin. Sometimes when you're applying it, you're like, is, oh, is that a mosquito? <laughs> Dude. That was like a dinosaur sized mosquito, not like a mosquito hawk. That was an actual, where did it fucking go? I'm scared. Okay guys, I'm gonna have to finish up because they've started construction next door apparently and it's killing my vibe. But um, something about this powder, it's so tightly pressed. It's almost like, 
very little goes on the skin so it makes it easy to layer and control the amount of bronzer you're applying so you don't hit the skin and all of a sudden you're like wow that is way too much bronzer that happens way too often to me and then i found this and it's been my go-to for a very long time now gotta clean off all the product in my hairline and then i can dust off this excess powder and give myself a mist charlotte tilbury airbrush fall setting spray so good love this stuff I have, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I would always use a brown mascara, brown black voluminous, L'Oreal voluminous mascara on my lower lashes, but now I like it on my upper lashes as well for an everyday look that just looks softer. And I'm so glad that Sky High makes a brown shade because I love this mascara. So this is True Brown Sky High Mascara. I'm gonna apply that. Now I curl my lashes all the time, whereas before I feel like I never did. I would just apply my mascara, but now I feel like I absolutely need it. Of course, gotta add that same mascara to the lower lashes. And then for the lip, I am still a ride or die for my Makeup Forever Anywhere Caffeine, but Hailey Bieber has also made that quite popular. So if you want another option, Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude is perfect. Love the formula. And then this is such a great way to elevate an everyday gloss or lip balm. I know it's bougie, but honestly, something about this formula just makes my lips look so juicy and plump. It is the YSL Beauty Rouge Volupte Candy Shine in the shade O2, which is essentially a clear. If not, the Maybelline glosses are still <laughs> on my list of most used glossy lip products. No more nude matte lips for me, honestly. I don't know what I was thinking with the matte nude lip, but they were definitely not it and it took me a long time to realize that all right that is my current go-to look and products any comments leave them for me down below give it a like subscribe and until next time see you guys bye